Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at Learning Craft, and I want to take a few minutes to show you how we can use a different type of variable, and that is the array. Now, what is an array? Well, apart from something you shout in celebration, an array is really a list that you can use, and from that you can extract values that you can put in a variable. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. I'm going to build this project for you very quickly. I'm going to go in and start by creating a button, and we'll just use a, a basic shape here. Let me grab this button. Convert it to a symbol. All right, so it's going to be a button. Now, what we want to do here is every time I click on this button, I want it to generate a value. Now, we've done this with randomizers in the past and using variables to create numbers, and that's fairly straightforward. Just go and decide what number you want to use as your base and go and, and work in that context. However, if you want to generate something other than a number, let's say a word, then it takes a little bit of a, a different angle of attack. Let me go in here into the button script and I'll show you what we can do here. To begin with, I'm going to go in and just give this button some sort of criteria so that it will do its trick when we click on it. So when we release the mouse button over the button, then it will go off and do something. And what I want to do in this case is I want to work with an array. And I'm going to start by just typing in new and then capital A array. And that's what it looks like. Now, the array that we're talking about here is going to equal something within a list value. And a list value in this case is really that. It's just a list of possible things. So let's say I go in here and I want to put in a bunch of different types of, let's say animals, that'll work. So I have a horse here. And I'm going to go in, how about a goat? Things you might find on a farm. And uh, you know what? You find cats on farms and uh, also the occasional dog. And you'll notice the formatting here is each one of the animals is put in quotation marks with a comma in between each one of these groupings to separate them into a list. I'm going to have, uh, oh, I guess we don't need a cap on that. All right, we have a llama. Let's make sure we put this in quotes. And how about a chicken? And uh, we have ducks on a farm. Once again, make sure you have all those quotation marks in the right place. And finally, uh, what do we have? Well, you know what? Pigs. Pigs are a, a handy thing. Okay, so what we have here basically is a list that we've put together that will give us an option of these different types of animals. Now, we don't want all of these animals to show up if we do some sort of randomizing command. Instead, what we want is for this program to go out and select one of these from this list and present it for us. Well, the way we set this up, let me just take this out of here for a moment, is I want to go in here and I want to say, first of all, I'm going to set up a new variable. And let's call this something like favorite animal. So favorite animal, in this case, equals something out of this new array that we've created. Now, in order to get that animal, what we have to do is we're going to take this value. Basically, we're going to take the entire list of all of these possible animals, and we're going to stick it into this container that we've just created called favorite animal. And then what we need to do is we need to go in here, and we need to select from this list and pull out a random value. Well, how do we do that? Well, the way we're going to do this is I'm going to create another variable, and this variable is going to be, we'll call it final animal. And you'll see what the difference here in a moment is. And final animal, what we're really doing is we're going to go take all of this content that's sitting here in this list, we're going to put it into this variable favorite animal, and then we're going to extract from favorite animal only one item. And the way we do this is we go in here and we say, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to use favorite animal, spelled correctly. It's always a good thing. And let me put in a square bracket here so it understands that it's working in this context. And I want you to go basically get a random value from this list. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start by putting in a math random. And also, in this case, I don't want to create a number as much as I want to create a value with somewhere in the list. So I want to make sure that this is going to be a truncated number. And if you haven't already done so, there's a YouTube video that really talks about randomizers, which will really help you here, one that I created several weeks ago. And it's worth taking a peek if you don't currently understand how randomizers work. And so in this case, I want to go and I want to make sure that I create a truncated version of the randomizer. I don't want a decimal point and lots of trailing zeros. And then I go in here, and now when we create our standard type of randomizer, we're going to say, give me a number of. But in this case, I don't want a number. I want something that is going to tell me which of the items in this list are, is the item that we want to choose randomly. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, once again, this variable as the point of reference. I'm going to go say favorite animal. And I have a problem here because what I really want to put in here, what I'd normally put in here as some sort of randomizer is a number that says, hey, go get me the random of 32. And it will go and figure out what number between 0 and 31, in that case, it would select. Well, in this case, we don't want a number. We want an item from the list. So what I'm saying is I want you to multiply it by favorite animal. And in this case, I don't know how many items are necessarily in this list because the list could change constantly. We can add animals, we could take animals out. So what I want to do is I want to have the program go and figure that out for me. So I'm just going to say, hey, I want you to go and multiply this and the value that you'll be using is based upon whatever the length of the variable favorite animal is. Okay? So it's as simple as that. We go in, let me just close that off there. And the final thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create some way of being able to put this content up. For, for the time being, let's just go in and put in a trace. Oh, one thing I need to do also before I'm done here is I owe this thing a, a closed bracket. Okay, let's see if that works for us. It's always worth checking to count your brackets to make sure everything is good. And we're in good shape there. And uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put in a trace command. Now, if you're not familiar with trace, what trace allows us to do as developers is to get an answer that only we're going to see. Now, I can go in here and I can create a field and I can dump the content into that field, which I may do in just a moment. But for testing purposes, I want to see in the output window that's right up here in the right-hand corner what kind of content is coming through. So if I go in here and say final animal, then what's going to happen is when this program runs, it's going to take whatever the value of this variable final animal is and it's going to go and toss it into the output window up here for me. Now, let's keep our fingers crossed. The problem with working without a net here is there's always some sort of a typo that can come to trip us up. But if we run the program and I go and I click on the button, then what it's done up here, you'll notice, is it's gone into that list and it's selected pig. If I click it again, now it's selected duck, and now it's chicken, and now it's chicken again, and duck, and dog, and dog, and llama. So it's going in and doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, just to help you understand this a little bit better, let me go ahead and put a trace here as well so we can see the values that are coming up. And if I say favorite animal, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, tell you what, in the output window every time I click the button, go and show me what the current value of favorite animal is, and then go and show me the value of final animal. And the reason I want to show you this is so you get an understanding of what's happening. When I click the button, the first thing that appears is favorite animal is everything in the list. And of cur currently there are seven items in the list. And then once we have all that information in the list, then we go and say, hey, I want you to go, first of all, determine the length of this list, and then use that number, in this case seven, to identify a random point. And then we're going to use that, and then we're going to extract that item from the list and put it in the variable that we're using as final animal and present that as well. So in this case, if we look up here, we know that the number that was generated was three because it pulled the third item out of our list and then presented it to us right here. Okay, so as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward process and granted, when you're not used to this, the code is a little arcane and, and can be confusing, but once again, if you play around with it a little bit, you'll get a better sense. And once again, if we can help you out in any way with your training needs, uh, whether it be in application development or in online advertising and marketing, please let us know. You can get in touch with us at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham. Have a great time with this, and I'll see you real soon.